Dear rail lovers, welcome to Railways Explained. Railways as a mode of transport have existed for almost 200 years. However, at some point, complexity and differences between the railway systems of different countries dictated a need for different kinds of organizations and the formal agreements between the governments and the railway companies. The aim was to make the traffic on larger scale even possible by harmonizing or defining unique operational rules and regulations, but also the manner of traffic organization and monitoring of overall development of the railway system. That's why today we are talking about international railway organizations. We divided this topic in two main parts, following the logic that there are two main types of these organizations. So in this video we discuss the intergovernmental organizations and in one of the next videos the organizations that have been formed by the railway companies. If you are ready, let's start. ORF is an intergovernmental organization dedicated to enabling international rail transport. It has been doing this since as far back as 1893, making it the oldest international organization in the railway sector. However, in its current form, ORF began operations on 1 May 1985 in accordance with the Convention Concerning International Carriage by Rail, also known as COREF, which was concluded five years earlier. Before this, ORIF was known as the Central Office for International Carriage by Rail and its work was based on International Convention Concerning the Carriage of Goods by Rail from 1890. The organization's headquarters are in Bern in Switzerland. Today, almost all European countries are members of ORIF, including Russia and the EU as a so-called collective member. In addition, there are Algeria, Morocco and Tunisia from Africa, and Turkey, Iraq, Iran, Lebanon, Jordan and Syria from Asia. However, Jordan has the status of an associate member, while the membership of Syria, Lebanon and Iraq is currently suspended. This makes a total of 50 members, plus one associate member, accounting for over 240,000 kilometers of railway lines. ORIF's focus was, and remains, to establish uniform legal system which enables international rail transport of passengers, luggage and goods, between the member states. It also facilitates implementation of this legal system, removal of barriers at border crossings, cooperation in drafting international agreements and continuous monitoring of the development of the railway system. ORIF has three major areas of activity – technical interoperability, dangerous goods and railway contracts. The convention itself is ORIF's basic text and it governs the running of organization, its objectives, attributions, relations with the member states and its activities in general. COREV has two main parts, convention itself and the seven appendices that establish uniform railway law. You can see their full names on the screen and get an idea of what they refer to. If you find this interesting, tell us in the comments below and we will consider making a video in which we would in more detail present each of these appendices. Now, time for the next organization. The Organization for Cooperation Between Railways was created as a counterpart to ORIF in the former socialist countries. Namely, in the early 50s, a reasonable need emerged for unifying legal and economic principles in these countries with the aim to ensure international carriage of passengers and freight. Additional reason was the fact that they had many common specifics, including the track gauge, characteristics of networks, legal systems, procedures, climate conditions, etc. In contrast to Western European countries, railway links between OSJD members are characterized by long routes, different time and climate zones, and changes of track gauge on a single route. For these reasons, this organization has survived to this day, despite the fact that some of its members have also become members of the European Union. Although the story of this organization begins in 1950, OSJD officially started working on 1 January 1957, based on the decision of the so-called First Conference of Ministers, which was held in June 1956 in Bulgaria. It related to the railway networks of Albania, Bulgaria, Hungary, Vietnam, Democratic Republic of Germany, China, People's Democratic Republic of Korea, Mongolia, Poland, Romania, the Soviet Union and Czechoslovakia. 
Today, OSJD has 25 members and its goal is to develop international rail transport between Europe and Asia by improving competitiveness of this mode of transport and improving cooperation between the member states. This organization ensures implementation of the Convention on International Passenger Transport by Rail and the Convention on International Carriage of Goods by Rail, which both contain common agreements, tariffs, procedures, rules, etc. The objective of the European Union Agency for Railways is to contribute to the further development and effective functioning of a single European railway area. It is helping to the achievement of this goal by guaranteeing a high level of railway safety and interoperability while at the same time improving the competitive position of the railway sector. The agency acts as European authority with headquarters located in Valenciennes in France. Under the so-called Fourth Railway Package from 2016 and its certain provisions which entered into force during 2019, the agency is now in charge for issuing vehicle authorizations, single safety certificates and ERTMS trackside pre-approvals on the EU level. The reason why is this so significant is the fact that until recently, these were the tasks performed exclusively on national level. In that way, unified approach to European safety and interoperability was almost impossible goal. The agency was also established with the aim to provide technical assistance to the EU member states and European Commission in the field of railway safety and interoperability. This implies activities such as those related to the development and implementation of technical specifications for interoperability and a common approach to railway safety issues. These railway safety issues include developing common safety objectives, common methods and common requirements for safety certificates, but also activities related to the transport of dangerous goods, collecting and publishing safety recommendations and investigation reports provided by national investigation bodies, and information related to certification bodies and certified entities in charge of maintenance. The list of all tasks and activities of the agency is too long to be explained within the single video. But long story short, the agency aims to contribute in first line technically, to the implementation of EU regulations related to raising the level of interoperability of the railway systems and to the development of a common approach to safety of the European railway system. The signing of the United Nations Charter on June 26, 1945, which entered into force the same year, provided a basis for the establishment of several UN bodies including the Economic and Social Council and later in 1947 the UN Economic Commission for Europe, UNECE, based in Geneva. UNECE is a forum where member states from Western Central and Eastern Europe, but also North America and Central Asia, together establish mechanisms and a medium of mutual economic cooperation. Within UNECE, so-called Inland Transport Committee has been formed, as the highest policy-making body of the UNECE in the field of transport. The ITC ensures mutual cooperation and consultation of different governments with the aim to enable exchange of experience and information on certain issues, to analyze transport and economic trends, but also the trends in transport policies, and to coordinate activities to achieve an efficient, coherent, balanced and flexible transport system in the related region. In order to effectively implement its scope of work, ITC has a working group for rail transport. This working group performs activities related to railway infrastructure, considers implementation and possible amendments to the European Agreement on Main International Railway Lines, and examines possibilities and recommendations for improving condition of international railway lines. It also deals with possibilities for modernization and expansion of railway infrastructure, the interoperability issues and coordination in the development of railway technical systems. On the long list of activities of this working group are also the tasks related to the promotion of use of environmentally friendly rolling stock, safety of railway transport, problems at border crossings and proposals for simplification of border procedures. In its work, ITC cooperates with other organizations such as ORIF, UIC, etc.
the International Transport Forum of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development is a global intergovernmental organization with 62 member countries. The forum was established by the adoption of the Dublin Declaration in 2006 by the transport ministers from 43 countries. The ITF is the successor to the European Conference of Ministers of Transport, founded by 16 European countries in accordance with the protocol for the establishment of ECMT from 1953. At the time, the primary task of ECMT was the coordination and rationalization of use of international land transport in Europe. Today, the ITF is the only international organization that deals with all modes of transport, including pedestrians and cyclists. The ITF deals with the adoption of certain policies in the field of transport, encourage a deeper understanding of transport and mobility, their role in economic growth, impact on sustainable development and environmental protection. Although administratively integrated in OECD, it has broad autonomy in its work. Like the OECD itself, the International Transport Forum is based in Paris. And unfortunately, we came to an end of this video. We hope that we managed to give you a brief insight into the field of intergovernmental railway organizations, which kinds of them exist, what are their roles, and how do they work to improve the position of railway transport on the global transport network. We remind you that in one of the next videos we are planning to talk about the organizations that have been formed by the companies from the railway sector. These include the UIC, CER, RNE, some regional railway associations, etc. For now, thanks for watching Railways Explained. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your real loving friends, and of course, subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, goodbye.